You're watching Dugascopy TV for brand new trading week. Well, all eyes will be on the Fed, BOJ and Eurozone CPI out this week. I'm joined by Jean-Francois from MJT to give us a brief market update. So Jean-Francois, can you just tell us, you know, what are you expecting to see from this week's major events? Hi, uh, Dorian. Um, okay, well, we're back on our standard mosaic, which gives us a view of the markets. So we're on a daily chart here, daily mosaic with a uh, euro dollar, a cable, Australian dollar, gold, dollar Swiss, dollar yen, uh, S&P futures, and a 30 year bond, treasury bond futures. Um, I wanted to start with uh, the S&P. Uh, we've basically been uh, bullish for quite some time. Uh, now about, uh, uh, well, since we started the interviews in September 2012, um, we believe that uh, we're slowly coming into exhaustion and uh, at the moment uh, with uh, the news coming out this week uh, we don't expect much change over the next week to 10 days however over the next month or so we believe we're going to be entering an intermediate or an important top situation which uh, may lead to several months of consolidation mm -hmm. um, so we're waiting uh, the FOMC uh, statement, we are awaiting uh, Yelling's speech, we are also awaiting uh, some important uh, job data. Well, uh, fundamentals is not, uh, or forecasting fundamentals is not my speciality, but from what I hear, uh, it seems that uh, um, the economy is, is on track with, uh, as far as the Fed is uh, considered, and uh, that uh, the job reports may surprise to the upside. So um, if we see here, this is an investor's view. So it's um, a weekly chart, a daily chart, and an hourly chart. And it's meant to offer you a differentiated an analysis of the various trends. And as you see at the moment, all three trends are still heading up. The weekly, and maybe focus on it first, is uh, well in the overbought zone, and the oscillator has started to turn. Uh, we are at stress on the envelopes. And we are not very far away from what we call impulsive two targets. Now, impulsive two targets is our most aggressive target, so they must be taken with a pinch of salt. But basically, it tells us that we've gone through our impulsive targets and we're getting towards a quite an expensive zone, which is confirmed by the two envelopes touching each other here, as well as the risk index being well in the red. So, an expensive environment. Uh, the projection is still heading up, so I'm not calling a major reversal, but a situation where we could soon get into an intermediate top leading into some consolidation. Now, the daily is also exhausted, meaning that uh, we've reached the impulsive targets in terms of the time frame. We've also gotten to the end of that time, time frame, and you can see the oscillator is also well in the red here and turning. So we're probably quite close to, to, um, to this big intermediate top we're talking mm -hmm. about. Now, on the early, I don't believe it's quite over yet, and maybe the job reports uh, will surprise you to the upside, but as you see, we still have an upward projection, which may last another week or so, and uh, our risk oscillator is well in the green still. I mean, uh, uh, the pullback has brought, it, ha has brought risk down quite a bit. So we believe there may be a possibility for a last move up, which could now last a week to 10 days. So that's with the S&P. Mm -hmm. um, now I'd like to um, move to the Euro. Now, uh, the other big news that we're awaiting this week is uh, the CPI news. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, well, the low inflation environment is, is, is posing a bit of a conundrum to, uh, to uh, the ECB. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's the fact that uh, uh, bank lending is also not expanding, uh, expanding very much. And there's a lot of talk about uh, trying to give more st stimulus into, into the Eurozone economy. Uh, now, uh, growth is there, it's not very strong, but is there, and is, is it really the time to cut? Well, I think, uh, for at least from what I read, it's, it shouldn't happen now, but it should happen in the near future. And the worse the CPI numbers come out, uh, the more chances uh, it is that there will be some ECB easing uh, in, in the near to mid-time future. Now, if we look at the euro chart, it's uh, still heading up over the long term. Uh, so in this case, uh, our projection, although you can see the oscillator topping out not too far from the red, is still, is still positive. 
However, on the daily, similar to what we see on the S&P, uh, the targets have been met, uh, the envelopes are touching each other almost for a second time, and, our, and our, our risk index is in the overbought red area, so quite expensive. So we believe that over the medium term, over the next few months, although there may be some, some, some attempts to, to create new highs, the, the outright of, of potential is not that strong. And so uh, the risk reward is mostly on the downside and on the t than, than, than moving up. Over the short term, um, in line basically with risk assets, we should see um, a possibly a last move up. We could see here that it's probably another week to go. It's already quite expensive, mm -hmm. oscillator is in the red, so maybe a bit of a rally here, but we don't think it's going very far. Okay. Now, looking at the mosaic, what would really change the picture for the euro is that uh, if the dollar could gain strength. And that's basically if, uh, if uh, growth could be confirmed in the US, mm -hmm. uh, if uh, people could see, have more certainty that a t a t a tapering is going to go to the end of it, and, uh, and that uh, basically uh, interest rates could start moving up in the US. And that has been a bit of a surprise since the beginning of the year because uh, uh, tapering, the story for us was that uh, we would probably see interest rise and an attempt for a normalization of the yield curve. And at the moment, long bonds are still uh, resuming their uptrend quite aggressively. So let's look at the 30-year Treasury bonds future. And as you, you can see, we were in a correction down here. And we almost made it through that correction down into what have, would have been a major reversal, uh, creating an impulsive move. But then prices found a flaw and are slowly resuming the uptrend and which uh, seems to be um, a quite a reasonable attempt. Mm -hmm. on, on the daily, they've moved above their corrective targets and are already looking at impulsive targets. And uh, on the early, well, it's pretty much as, as, as with the other markets. There's probably another week or so to go. Um, now, uh, this may be due to political reasons, meaning that uh, the, the crisis in, in uh, Ukraine is, is provoking some flight to quality. It's probably also due to flows of funds as uh, the tapering has, uh, has hit emerging markets investments quite, uh, quite aggressively. So there's probably some, some flows into treasury bonds. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, for us, as long as this situation continues, uh, it seems that um, uh, normalization of the interest rate curve and uh, a hike in interest rates, maybe a year away, is still not being believed by the market. And so uh, at the moment, uh, as from what we see, uh, bonds are resuming the uptrend and are being a, a bit full. Uh, finally, gold, well, if interest rates are moving lower, there's less deleveraging pressure on gold, mm -hmm. and that gives gold a chance to try to correct up and create, uh, and, and create an upward uh, momentum. Well, for now, the weeklies are still heading down, and uh, we're still in what we would call an important downtrend, and still has some potential and maybe a few quarters to go. And I would only caveat that it, if I was able to create a very strong move on the dailies. And the dailies have made one first attempt here, but the correction was also quite strong. Now, the trend doesn't seem over, and it seems like there's probably another two, three months to go into June. For us, it's going to be very important if we need to revisit our long-term negative forecast, this, the next move up should be quite strong and should make it above these, uh, the, the March highs. If it doesn't, we believe it's resumed downtrend and gold is probably going to fulfill the, ne uh, the negative trend that we have on, on the weeklies. Finally, just to finish off, over the short term, well, a first, uh, a first test is going to be our corrective targets on the hourlies, mm -hmm. and so we would need to make it above 1326 to really start creating some momentum on gold. Jean-Francois, thank you very much as always. It was a pleasure having you in the studio. Thank you for having me. Well, viewers, that's it for right now, but do stay tuned to Dukascopy TV as we have plenty more economic updates heading your way. Goodbye for now.